So I'm just going to rifle through a bunch of questions that we've gotten through the Facebook group over the past couple of weeks, some that I found really interesting, some that I found very common, very useful. So let me pull up some of these. I think we got five or eight here. All right. So first off, check out mobilebarhub.com for podcasts, for more topics. I'm going to be putting a lot of these onto the website and onto the podcast itself. Let's dive into the first question. It's from Abby. It says, hello, all. I'm working on the financials of my business plan and I'm seeking some guidance on realistic event counts on the year and pricing structures. If there are any experienced bar owners willing to share some numbers, the student future bar owner would be very grateful. Very cool setup right here. Love that truck. Love how it looks, by the way. So the financials and the business plan. So this is going to be completely dependent on the business owner itself. And I would suggest checking out a couple of the other podcasts, essentially that are focused on sales and marketing. And sales cures all. I think that's the one phrase I always use, that your ability to close more clients and figure out a machine that is going to help you get more opportunities and close more events at a higher price point is very important. And for us, for our business, this is something that we do on the side. I have a recruiting agency. I have another business that's all about helping people with recruiting agencies and consulting. So this is something we've done on the side and we've had goals to really just make around 35 or 40 thousand extra dollars on the side, work around 10 or 12 events. And we have a ton of leads in our system from people that we don't, or we're not going to close an event for, but if we were doing this full time, we could fill up the calendar. You can absolutely run this full time and fill up your calendar with a lot of events and drive this thing over to, I really think of this as my full time gig. I'm casually doing this on the side and I'm closing 40, $50,000 worth of leads. I could easily get it up to 200 and start to scale. So you have to set up your sales system. I'm going to be building that in HoneyBook. The financials, just set up your bank accounts, all that stuff. I'm not sure if you're talking about projections here in that question, but yeah, just set up the sales machine. You're going to be fine. Numbers, future borrowers would be grateful. I think that's really what you were looking for there, but go check out some of those other podcast. So Courtney says, Hey, all what booking platforms have you had the greatest success with? Have any sites provided a challenge? So we have not used many booking platforms, to be honest. I've heard good things about the knot, but I know it's $5,000. There's a handful others that I've heard before. And to be Frank, really think it's worth simply running your own show and driving your own leads. Our main avenues have been social media ads, so Facebook and Instagram ads, we created like a six second video. It was 10 seconds. Actually, we put it out there. We targeted our local area. We ran a very simple ad and we gave away a brochure in exchange for email addresses. And then we just remarketed all those emails. So we would send an email every couple of weeks saying, here are some events that we've done in the past, talking about what this can do to elevate your specific event. And we had a quote form in the emails. We've also run ads specifically to get people to request a quote for a specific event that's coming up. So I guess I didn't really answer the question directly. My, my answer would be don't mess with them. I think they're overpriced and the return on investment for social ads for our business is very high. But the knot is one that I've seen maybe Yelp. I don't know. Something like that is what I would go with. It's probably the knot. Uh, to pile on that one, the knot, you're going to close more weddings, which give you higher ticket events too. That's what I meant to say. You're going to be able to close $3,000, $4,000 events. All right. Danielle started anyone up and running in New Jersey. We just bought our trailer and are super excited to renovate. Just curious if we need anything other than LLC and insurances. Do we need a permit or catering license? I have read the ABC handbook a dozen times. Um, so this is the most common question in the group from people that are starting their businesses. It's all based on licensing and what insurances that people need. So there are different DRAM laws depending on what state that you're in, but there's also different local laws depending on where you're at. That's why it's very difficult to give blanket advice and why when you ask other people in your state, it's very difficult to give that blanket advice. So you really have a handful of options on how to get these answers. So you can 
connect with a local lawyer. That's most likely going to be fairly expensive depending on how much they're going to charge per hour, but that's going to be the safest. Dennis, my business partner, he called local government offices and he was persistent with getting the right people on the phone with getting answers. That's your second one. And what you're going to find is government institutions are very difficult to get information from, which drives me up a wall, makes you want to bang your head against the wall. And yeah, it's hard to get that information, but poke around on their websites, get some representatives on the phone, do what you need to do. Here's what Dennis did that actually was the quickest way to information. He reached out to local competitors or local mobile bar owners trying to get them on the phone. Didn't think this was going to work at all, but there was one guy locally who was willing to give us information because he ran a much larger business. He didn't take events on with headcounts lower than 75 or 100. So he had somebody to unload business to. We took those events and he made a little cut from it. We also helped him out with some events in that first year. So he got something out of creating the relationship with helping us figure out licensing and all that stuff. I wouldn't do that for anybody else, especially in my direct local area, because I don't want to build up a business just for them to take events for me. But the point I'm making is contact somebody in your state that's running a mobile bar. I have it be at the other end of the state and let them know, hey, I'm willing to give you $100 for an hour of your time to just walk me through some basics about licensing and things of that nature. And just reaching out to people to pick their brains. It's just, it's really annoying as a business owner to hop on a call when I have other things to do, just to handhold somebody through paperwork, basically. And they just take from you and they run away forever. So offer them something, or if they're close to you, you can let them know, hey, if we have leads that we're overflowed with, we'll pass them to you that are maybe a little bit too far from us. Things like that. There's got to be an exchange, but then you're going to get direct answers from somebody who's running the business and it'll be a lot quicker. It'll be a good hundred dollars to spend. All right, Corey asked, just starting up our first trailer, we have most of the research done. Just curious if anybody has a general contract that is simple to use. We will not be providing the alcohol, just the trailer and bartender services. So contract stuff, another very common question. This is on mobilebarhub.com. I posted our template that you can use. Again, it's not for you to use and just run with. Consult with a lawyer on specific things that you need to put into the contract. But the bigger part of this is we're not providing the alcohol, just the trailer and bartender services. There are a couple questions specifically on dry hire, what you should be charging and how to set all of that up. So what we do is we have our clients put in an order with local uh, liquor store, online order. They put in their credit card information and we simply pick it up for them or we go in with them. So they have technically bought the alcohol and we are just holding it. So that's very important for legal reasons. And again, Depends on your state and exactly how that needs to work. If they need to have the liquor on site and then give it to you, uh, you need to pay attention to those details. But the dry hire for us, we usually have a number that we want to hit after expenses with the ice, the cups, transportation uh, that we want to hit. And for us, it's typically in a weekend, we want to be at around like 1600 in profit for us to take that cash home. And then we add the expenses on top. And Really, the secret here with the pricing is more so to focus on how you're setting up the conversation. So what I mean by that is somebody's taking you on for dry hire. You want to, on the phone call or within the email, talk about everything that goes into the event. Talk about the pain points that goes into all of this with setup, with prepping all the garnishes, getting the ice, using the equipment, the transportation of some of the alcohol, all of that stuff is really important because you want to point out specifically why that dry hire makes sense, why you're taking home 1600 in profit with all the insurance, all the, just everything that goes into it, paint that picture. And if you're afraid of them taking all of that on their own and just setting it all up their self. They're going to think about everything they need to do for this event. And that's how you're going to close deals. Don't be afraid of the sticker shock there. They're going to end up coming back to you a lot of times anyways. Don't put your price down lower because that number seems large. Stick with your gut and that's it. All right. So next question, I'm working on renovating my trailer slowly myself, wondering about Order timing of the business steps. What should I be doing before the trailer is even done? Can I get permits or anything before having the business done? 
Should I wait till the trailer's finished? All right, so good questions here. I think when you're first building this thing up, you definitely want to plant seeds in terms of the licensing and the insurance, understanding exactly what you need to do. Because if you do need to get specific type of liquor licensing in your state, it, it a lot of times is going to be a slow process. So you want to put in your applications early. I would say that's the biggest thing that you need to do in terms of the business side. Also the insurance side, it's good to know what you're up against and what you need to have in place when the business is up and but the rest of the stuff the branding and whatnot I, that stuff is fairly quick for you to get done the website building the software stuff and again i'm going to be building that in the membership area all the honey book is it's all in one place i've teamed up with them as well that's stuff that you can get set up fairly quickly but on the business side again social media and those pages, I would start to just tell the story of your renovation of the trailer. And people really do love seeing that stuff. They love seeing an old rusty trailer being turned into something great. And that starting at the grassroots and sharing a story is so good to catch attention and gain some momentum. Don't worry about branding and making yourself look incredible and the trailer look brand new. People love following stories. They love following people. I would say get your social media up right away. Get some of your social pages up right away. Should I wait till the trailer is finished? No, don't wait till the trailer is finished. You can start setting things up. That brings me to another point is when you're building a business, there's never a time where doing something ever feels amazing or ever feels like the perfect time. Everybody tends to think there's a day where you wake up and the sun shines on you perfectly and it's this is the day I'm going to go buy a trailer. It never feels good, never feels perfect. It never feels like all your ducks are in a row. And this goes with sales. It goes with marketing. Can tell you how many times people are looking for the perfect email template or the perfect way to talk on the phone for sales. It's just go. It's not that complicated. Don't wait for things to feel perfect. All right, so for those of you who have put a tile backsplash, how do you go about doing that? What is the easiest way to do it? I wasn't sure how the movement of the trailer would affect that. Thank you. And here's my business partner down here, Dennis, saying peel and stick all day, keep it lightweight. I remember one day when he brought the peel and stick back and I thought it looked, I was like look, looking at them on the roll. I thought it was goofy. I thought he was crazy. He put them up and it's something we get complimented on all the time. They're like, are those real, is that real tiles back there? No, that's peel and stick. It's very lightweight. Thing you can do to keep down the weight of the trailer is great. Go on Amazon. So if you see behind me right here, this is not real brick. It's, I forget what the material is, but this is something that you can get that looks like wood, very lightweight. Whenever you're adding like either pallet wood as a backdrop, that can really get heavy and the weight can start to add up. Everything's on Amazon for this. I'll find out exactly what the material is, but this stays flat. You can iron it and it looks like real brick. Um, and I have a lot of wood paneling that people think is real wood paneling that I've gotten comments on my other podcasts. What a great setup. And I'm would tell them, Hey, this is wood paneling that I bought for $20 on Amazon. And I duct taped it to my basement wall. Basically any way that you can save weight is good. And the tile actually end up looking very good. Would be interested to know what gross sales of anybody who's been doing this for three plus years, just curious on expectations and how profitable the business can be. So this is completely dependent. Again, we talked about this earlier on the business owner and your ability to be sales minded. So the number one thing you can do is understand sales on a deeper level, understand you need to follow up with leads multiple times. This is not a business or any business in the world is never going to be a place where you get a lead, they are super interested, they close on the first call every single time, and that's the business. The reason why a lot of people fail in business, period, is because they don't follow up with the leads. So you need to set up automation, you need to have a good little marketing machine. And for us, again, we I could easily get this thing up to 200 grand for the year, but I run two other businesses that are primary. This is honestly just like a fun project for us. We make an extra 40 grand for the year. We run around 10 or 12 events and very happy with that. We don't need to scale this thing to ridiculous levels, but you can absolutely, it depends on location as well. If you're in Nebraska in a small town, no hate on Nebraska at all. But if you have 30 people in the town, there's only one wedding there per year, probably max. 
So a little bit more difficult, but yeah, this can absolutely replace a full-time gig as long as you are setting up your sales and marketing machine and you're focused on closing deals. And again, you don't need all these bells and whistles to close deals, everybody. This is not that complicated. You don't need to buy a bunch of consulting. All you need to do is figure out one or two channels that are consistent, set up your net to, to catch as many leads as humanly possible, and figure out the best way to maximize those leads. So if you have 50 leads, you should be closing 15, 20 of those at least, right? And if you're not closing those deals before you expand into to, to new avenues, oh, I need to get into the knot. I need to try this avenue for marketing. I need to get on this platform. It's, you need to make sure you're closing the deals and the leads that you have before you expand, and you're going to be more than fine. This has got to be the easiest business, in my opinion, that I've ever worked in terms of closing deals, period. It's it's so easy compared to any B2B situation I've been in. I worked at a marketing agency for so many small businesses. This is the easiest one to close. And the profit spreads and margins are very good. So, yeah. All right. Hey, everybody. I'm, did we already answer this one? I'm currently headed to our first event. I'm a nervous wreck that our keg grader will be too shaken to start serving beer on time. My question is how long do you guys normally wait until transporting the keg until it's ready to serve? Yeah, so this is a common concern. But as long as your keg is cold, make sure that it's iced down like the night before. So this is why we have, a, we basically have a bunch of protein containers and blocks that we freeze in our personal freezer here we chop them all up and we get the keg ice cold the night before that's really important way you set up your keg couplers making sure the co2 is turned on while you're before you hook it up there's a bunch of really good tips on youtube about how to set up your keg your kegs but yeah we roll up to events all the time where this thing has been shaking in the back for an hour we just give ourselves a good hour and a half before to set everything up to make sure we're not rushing around and setting up the keg is one thing that we'll wait to do. So all those bubbles can really settle, but um, paying attention to where it's located to how you're storing it. You don't want to put it in the way back of the trailer where you're getting the most bounce. We put it up towards the front, up towards that hitch, right into that little area. And it tends to work very well. We The beer pours fine. It's a little bit, why is this word escaping my mind right now? It's bubbly or fizzy at the beginning. You just pour out maybe a pitcher and you're good to go. So yeah, little things like that, where you're storing it, waiting a little while, also making sure it's ice cold the night before are going to be huge. Storing it in, uh, we have those green keg coolers, which are good. And usually we put a little ice in the bottom. So there's a little leeway when it's shaking, it's not slamming against things. So you're getting hard splashes, but don't overthink that. And it looks like this was last month. So I'm sure you're fine. Hey guys, I'm starting on my mobile bar here in Orlando. Anybody knows what kind of licensing I would get to get started. I already answered this question, but yeah, the license licensing thing is the question that is always daily in the Facebook group from people that are first getting in to recap a question that I answered earlier. Call your local government. Be persistent with getting these people on the phone. It may be a scenario where you need to let them know that you're not going away until you get the answers. That's their job as the government to give you these answers. Call up a lawyer. Try to get a better understanding of your DRAM laws, of uh, how these businesses are seen in the view of the government and law. Are you attached to a brick and mortar store? Are you viewed as more of a caterer? Those are very important, but... Again, just call an, call up another mobile bar and don't just pick their brain. Don't be one of those people. I just want to pick your brain for an hour and just take from you and you'll never hear from me again. And you're just going to handhold me through paperwork instead of going to the gym or going to your daughter's soccer game, whatever. They, nobody wants to do that. So offer them up a hundred bucks for the hour. They're going to tell you exactly what to do. And it's going to just save you a bunch of headaches. <laughs> you know, that hundred bucks, you could probably pay them more for that hour and it's going to be worth it. So yeah, let me know below if you have any more comments. It's the end of the live, everybody, unless you have any more questions. Again, check out mobilebarhub.com for all these podcasts. I'm going to consistently be putting out free content. And yeah, I'm going to be teaming up with HoneyBook. Be, I know people are looking for a straight up build side by side, how to get leads, how to handle the leads, how to close more deals. 
So I'm going to be creating that, a little membership area. Don't pay for coaching. That's absurd pricing. It's all going to be here for free in the podcast, mobilebarhub.com. All right. I'm going to go get a workout in. We will see you next time, everybody. Love yous.